all right let me catch you guys up on the tool truck here we got i finally got the drive shaft back on laying in the mud under there it wasn't pretty i didn't want to uh didn't want y'all watching all that fun but uh got the drive shaft done a couple of things that were in the back of the bed i got uh that were bolted through the bottom i had to undo shift linkage uh shift cable attached okay um we got some some fire makers right here hooked up i gotta watch this one because this one is uh not i don't have a battery box in so what i gotta do is we gotta take out our bug preventers and our ziploc bags on the plenum and our stuffing in the water pump and we're not gonna worry about a belt and all that stuff because i just want to see if she's gonna uh, fire up so we're gonna pull all that out check our fluids again and see what's what but we got the batteries hooked up and we're not letting any smoke out the wire so that's a good sign so far let me get a tripod and get you guys set up and we'll get the rest of it going i don't think we're gonna have any pull on this water pump but i'm gonna go ahead and take these rags out anyway let's so just put them over here and take them out to turbo put that right there got some zip locks on top of the intakes Time for this old girl to start breathing on her own again. <clears throat> Just want to make sure we got all of the if ands and buts taken care of before I go button all this back up. And uh, while I got everything out of the way. That don't need to be like that, so put that there. These need to be separated. This is the intake air heater. And it'll it probably won't be hot, but it damn sure don't need to be attached to the ground. I don't think that thing comes on until it gets Canada cold. But, all right, we'll put that up there. So that's separated. We got airflow. Check my turbo. Oh, yeah, she's still good and she's spinning. Yep. All right. And again, we're just trying to trying to get her popped off and just enough to see if she'll start so we're not trying to run it all right she's about two quarts low but that'll fly for today's purposes I'm trying to hope I will remember every damn thing that's going on with this because having a few of these seven threes going on at the same time is always fun trying to keep all this crap in your head all right fluids are good rags are out of the holes i'm not going to suck anything up into the engine oh come on power steering Let's see. Uh, might need a little bit in there. Uh, let me get my light. Uh, now nah, she's good for right now. I ain't turning anyway with no fan belt, so shouldn't really matter. All right. 
what I want to do is check on glow plugs. So I'm going to go to my good handy dandy ground spot right here. Make sure the test light's working. And I'm going to turn the key on. And we're going to check the relay. And before I check that, let me let me check the incoming side. Alright, so we hot there. So let me see what blows up when we turn the key on. Alright, well. Sounding good. No glow plug relay. Alright, well. I have to figure that out. Let me see. So I've had I was doing some fuse checking as we're getting this truck ready to go. And uh, I wasn't getting communication on the PCM. And it reminded me as I was checking some fuses, A, I didn't get it on film, but I'll show y'all what we ended up doing. And B, um, some people have asked me about this, so I wanna show y'all how to do this. And so let me see, let me look at the screen and see if I got enough. Yeah, we got enough height there. I got a bad habit of filming stuff and half of it ain't even in the damn screenshot. So, I'm going to the negative post right here, and this is just a test light. So on all these fuses, well, most of them, I've seen them without it, but most of them have little exposed ends on the left and the right. So you don't have to pull the whole fuse out. So if you ground it, and if you watch right here, you tap the left and it's hot, and you tap the right and it's hot. That means that, you know, one leg is input power, one leg is outgoing power, and if, one side it is hot and one side is not. That means the fuse is broken and you have no power going down the outgoing side. So you can quickly check just by going down the fuses and the little fuses have it too. Now some of these fuses down here in the small section of the distribution box or headlight or uh, you know fuses like that that have, you have to have the item on before they'll do anything but a lot of these are just power feeds so you can just literally go down the line and tap the left tap the right tap the left tap the right and that'll tell you if your fuses are good and you can do that inside the cab too and since the inside the cab thing is such a um, tight spot to get in and I'm trying to get a few things done before everything ends up in the Sun right here I'm gonna uh, show you what I ended up doing um, on paper, but I also want to show you something else on this outside box. Okay, again, this is the distribution box. Now, if you look right here, there's two, the first two little spots I'm gonna show you on the paper. These have a little, these are diodes. The one on the, on the fender side is a PCM diode. And the one on the inner side is the AC diode. And what that does, a diode just prevents electricity from flowing backwards so it only allows it to go one direction of course you got relays here your maxis and your mini fuses we'll get into that at some point but this diode was missing and the ac diode is still missing so i remember that this was a parts truck before we started putting it back together so i had another parts truck i robbed a diode off of and so we got this done and let me bring you around Hang on one second here. All right, so this is the fuse box in the, you know, with relays and whatnot in here. This one's missing a few because this is a base truck with no power windows and stuff. So basically I'm gonna show you what we ended up doing on this. Let me see if I can hold the camera steady in there. So all I did was go with my power probe, left and right, on all of these fuses and I made a list of what fuses were acting stupid so 
uh, let's see, where was it? 15. Yeah. So I had some dead fuses where it's dead on both sides, which means most of the time, like a wiper relay, you'd have to turn those wipers on and then test the fuse. Like power's not going through the fuse until that device is powered up. So that'll be dead on both sides. But 15 was hot on one side and not on the other. And when I looked it up, that's gym module. So that was this one right here. And then I have a cheat sheet. This is in your owner's manual, or you can pull it up online. But um, 15, gym module, instrument cluster, and a few other options. And the PCM right here at the end. So that one was dead. So put a new 5 amp fuse, and it shows you on here. Number 15 takes a 5 amp fuse, and this is what all powers off of that. So between the uh let me flip to the junction box this is a blown up version of the relay so this is the junction box and this is the pcm diode and the ac diode that we just showed you and you can you know this i have descriptions of the junction god dog it everything's moving everywhere this morning so we got i just keep this as a handy little printout and they get beat to hell, so I save them on the computer where I can reprint them. So basically, uh, I hate to see you all right and basically got to be the most two ridiculously overused terms on videos. So fuse number 15 needed another 15 amp fuse, and then all of a sudden, we started getting the wait to start light and some other lights on the cluster and the, the um, chime bells and that diode. And that got us uh, PCM power. I did bump the crank over just to um, just to see if she would, you know, if we had power. And I did check. Let me let me bring y'all back around to the front. Once we had the PCM firing up, we were able to take our test light from the ground and test this hot. This is the always hot and this is the switchable hot on the glow plug relay this front relay is for the uh, air intake heater i'm in south louisiana that's pretty much useless but i wasn't getting hot to the glow plugs so we are getting hot to the glow plugs now and uh so we're getting closer to uh firing her up what i want to do now is i haven't been in the fuel system in a while i do not know what the fuel filter looks like and let me get a light and see if I can set up the camera and show y'all another little thing on the fuel system. Okay, so I'm back. I had to get a light. My other one was dead. So you guys know there's a ball valve on the back of the fuel filter to drain everything uh, in the fuel filter. And what I meant by everything is not that it drains everything, but in a sheer uh, typical Ford Genius, and I'm going to come down below this idler because I got all my front end on. Oh, Lord. All right. So that nipple that's sticking out right there, right next to the motor mount and right by this lower bracket bolt, is the drain tube. And they have it cocked to piss all over everything under here, which uh, is kind of really crazy to make it, you know, make a mess and hard to get in a drain pan. So what i do is whenever i get any of these seven threes in here i just get a piece of um you know i don't know foot foot and a half sometime two foot whatever i have piece of fuel hose if you have what size is this i think this is three eighths this is a loose fit five sixteenths is a real tight fit you don't need a hose clamp on the five but uh i'm gonna put this in and show y'all but basically what you're gonna do is route this somewhere where it'll pee down in one stream and not get every freaking thing under the truck wet and then you can put a catch pan under there and catch everything and not make a mess and not coat everything uh underneath the truck in diesel so just a little shortcut on the fuel system so i'm gonna put this hose on there drain the fuel filter i'm sure we're gonna need a new one 
I don't recall whether I put a new one in. So we'll get that done and make sure that the fuel pump is kicking on and priming. So if we got fuel and we got computer and we got glow plugs, we should, should get a little pop off. So let's see what we get. All right, so I opened this up, pulled the filter out, um, had some dark diesel in the bottom that didn't want to drain out. So I put the cap back on, I was gonna flush it out. But with the pump going, you can see our little uh, tube there. That's our little drain tube we put on. Looks like we're having a little prostate trouble with the old girl. Looks like we're going to have to see about fuel pump issues. Alright, well, let me get on that and i got to get some cardboard and we'll get under here and see what's going on with the fuel pump. Okay, we're gonna do a little test and see if we're getting fuel or if the pump is pumping or if the pump is out of juice, whatever. So I got no filter in here. The ball valve is open. So whatever, if we get anything, it's gonna pee out into the tank right there and we'll be able to see it from under the truck. So we got one battery hooked up and we got our power probe hooked up to that same battery. So that way we can check out and see if maybe we can power that um, power the fuel pump. Like I'm, I, this is my own video, and I can't even figure out what the hell I'm trying to say. So we can send power to the fuel pump and kick it on, and um, see what's happening. You know, see see if we can make make it peace. So either we got a bad fuel pump, bad electrical, or not enough fuel in the tank, which we should have enough for it to pick up provided the pickup in the tank hadn't fallen off which is common and you've seen some other videos of mine on that so uh let's get under there and see what we can make happen all right this is gonna be a little tricky but basically what i did here is i got the rubber boots off of the nuts going to front of the fuel pump i'm gonna take the power probe and all right, if we get a green light, that's supposed to be a ground, but it could be double greens because they're not, uh, it's not on. So I got to figure out which one of these is the hot. All right, so that's double greens because I don't want to send juice backwards. All right, let me put this camera down and figure that out. All right, it's probably not gonna show here, but this red wire up in here goes to this. So this is the hot. So now what I'm gonna do is send it and see if it makes this fuel pump pump. And it does. So we're gonna watch up front and see if any fuel starts coming out. Alright, we're getting some fuel. Not an astronomical amount, but it's getting there. So she is pumping, but she's not may not be pumping any volume. We're gonna let her pump for a little. I don't know if you guys can make that out. But she is peeing a little stream. But not what she should be. Alright, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to run that pump a little bit and see what's what with the, see if the stream picks up any. And if not, we might need to put some fuel in the tank or maybe she's just old and not putting out volume. Let me look into it. All right, well, I put a little bit more fuel in it, so she's got a quarter tank. The pump is pumping, but we're not getting anything, not getting any volume or anything out of here. It's pumping for 30 seconds and shutting off like it should. But when I open the ball valve, and I even put a new filter in here, because sometimes they won't pump without a filter, but... I'm barely getting some drips 
out of that thing. So either we got a pickup tube problem or the fuel pump ain't pumping. So we're gonna either have to swap the fuel pump or test it out. All right, one thing leads to another. Well, we got a, did a little test and I noticed when I was underneath the truck that the pump just sounded like it was free spinning. Now either it's not pulling suction because the line's not primed or it's not in fuel. So I put 10 gallons of diesel in it and got it up to half a tank. So what I'm showing y'all is this method right here. So I turned the key on so the pump would cycle and I stuffed a rag in here and held this tight and bled some compressed air just not a ton but just enough to put some positive air pressure in the tank because this truck hadn't run in a long time so we wanted to force feed uh, fuel and prime that line up and in coming up here to check to see if we were dripping I noticed we weren't dripping right here from our drip tube, but we were leaking all from the where the drip tube or, or originates from the back of the um, fuel bowl. So it's all in the valley and it was all dripping all over. So we're primed now and uh, I'm still leaking from the fuel cap. I had a fuel filter, but the wrong style. So I'm gonna go grab a fuel filter and put it in here and see if we can seal that up and decide whether or not it's just a ball valve for the uh, drain that was leaking all in the valley or if we got some other stuff going on with the fuel bowl and we need to do a reseal with it so let me grab a fuel filter and then we can try and see what kind of fuel pressure we're seeing as y'all can see it's getting dark but uh, i wanted to let you know i got a fuel filter put it in with the correct o-ring on the cap and that uh, tightened up and cycling the key to prime the pump is not causing any leaks. So the only place it's leaking is probably from the little rubber boot that attaches the metal line to the back of the housing or the ball valve itself is leaking. I'll have to figure that out later. But for right now, you can cycle the key and we're getting fuel going through it and it's not leaking in all in the valley so we're good there all right guys so that catches you up on the fuel filter situation she should be getting ready to uh, fire up I mean, we got fuel we got computer we got fluids uh only thing I, now that i have the computer i can scan and see what the high pressure oil looks like so we'll work on that uh tomorrow if it's not raining all right, well, we're finally gonna get spinning this over, see if she's gonna crank. We got our batteries hooked up. We checked our fluids. We got our fuel filter installed. Didn't see any leaks. We're gonna check it again when I cycle the key. We don't need the belt for right now. We just test fire them. So let's see what we get. I got the fuel pump pumping, so I'm gonna check for diesel leaks because we had a little issue with the with that, but that looks good. Got the glow plugs heat up. I think we ran the batteries down a little bit. We're gonna do some, we're gonna put the charge on them and do some cranking in a little while. All right, I had to get the battery charged and let it sit for a little while. I checked the um, high pressure oil fluid reservoir and it was down a little bit. So I used our little squirt bottle and topped it off. So let's kind of check things out, see if it wants.
hopefully this thing is priming up the oil system. I'm just starting to see a little pressure. I went ahead and unplugged the ICP just to uh, see if she'll start and we had to turn the battery charge up to jump start. Let's see. shit all out of the trans cooler line. That's just what we wanted to do. Uh, I got two trans cooler lines looped and two of them not looped. Huh. Okay. Well, we didn't need that grass anyway. Let me uh, re-loop those and see if I can plug that ICP in. Well, we got it popped off, but forgot about these. I looped the two cooler lines that go down to the um, to the bottom of the radiator, and I forgot to loop the other two. So she shot about a quarter transmission fluid out. We're gonna get these on there, and that's just gonna make our loop for the transmission. And that way, we don't have to worry about making a mess anymore. That's the problem I got right now. <laughs> Some of these things I've been jumping around on and coming back to, and then you forget where you left off. All right. That ought to button that up. That's what I wanted to know before I buttoned up all of this other stuff that she's in running form and we're not leaking transmission fluid anymore okay all right let's see what's next all right well we know she's running now so it's time to get this girl's smile back together so we're gonna start putting a little bit of the front on here I got a couple of parts coming in tomorrow for the water pump fill necks and the thermostat and stuff so we may leave the radiator out and um, fight that tomorrow or we may just go ahead on in with the damn thing I don't know we'll see how it goes I'll put y'all on time lapse for that and that way I can turn up some jam and see if we can get a little bit done before it gets dark
Well, she's starting to look like a truck again. Uh, getting some of the front on. I'm gonna, that's the, I don't know if you can see it in the shade, but we got the power steering cooler there. Uh, I have a couple of 7.3 coolers. I don't think I have a 6.0. So we're gonna change that out and put a 7.3 cooler on it. Oh, let's see, fan belts. We got spider and turbo plumbing to put on, coolant to put in. So uh, I think we're getting a little long on the video, the uh, clips for section two or part two on this one. So I think what we're gonna end up doing is calling this part two and we'll pick up from here on the next one. All right guys, if y'all have any tips for me or if I can help you guys with anything, hit me up in the comments. And other than that, I appreciate you watching and we'll see y'all on the next one.